I do like mice. Yeah. You end up having passion for the animals that you work with. They still excite me when I see a new mammal coming out of a trap. The very nice thing of doing research on mammals here at Whiteham is that it has a very, very long tradition and that roots back to the beginning of ecology as a modern science. And it then continued for the 40s, 50s, 60s on research on voles, bank voles, Apatimus sylvaticus, the wood mouse. All of these species were critical uh, at, the, at the beginning. Charles Elton actually said, it's not the uniqueness of white that make it important, it's typical of a British woodland, because we can do research here and study animals and it's then applicable uh, across uh, other areas of the UK. He considered that species could not be analysed or understood in isolation from, from their environment. So he was aware that we had to have a good understanding of the predator communities. We also have that at Whiteham. Mammals are very evasive creatures, so you cannot just see them. So for a very long time, the research has relied on using indirect signs of presence on carnivores. What researchers did was collect scats day after day. Uh, rodents are interesting because they are at the base of the trophic pyramids in natural woodland. So basically everybody eats them. So if you're a mouse, you need to be fast at escaping and running. What we do is use a trap to capture mice. We have to modify these traps and we have to modify them in order to uh, fit in more food and fit in bedding as well. Um, I've never tried trapping with cheese. I'll have to try it one day. The thing that they really go for is peanuts. And we use apple to provide those moisture because they can dehydrate quite easily. And before we release them, we give them some more apple and peanuts. So we put the, the cotton wool and that's where you sometimes find the mice when you open the trap, just, just sleeping nicely and comfortably. It provides the mice and the rodents in general with a protection against losing a lot of heat. And what we're doing is we're collecting data on individuals, the life history of an individual. So for example, their weights, their rear foot lengths, body condition, through time. Now with the power of computers, we're looking at using much more complicated mathematical models, which previously haven't been possible. They're the major disperser of native tree seeds. Their behaviour will have, to a certain extent, determined the structure of a woodland. One of the monitoring systems that we have in place allow us to quantify the contact rate between individuals. So at the end of a very long period, we, we actually have the map of who had contacted who like social networks, there's software that allows you to do that. And that then gives you an idea of who are the solitary individuals and who are the most social individuals as well. You end up recognizing uh, different behavioral patterns from different individuals. They are mice that you can see that are much more outgoing. You can also see some behavioral patterns that resemble that when you're actually handling them. We've had one yellow neck mouse that was it's the most chilled out mouse I've ever seen. So I think that was possibly the most amazing thing. 